Welcome to this video. And in this video, I'm going to give you a tour of the configuration options for time capsule. Now, I'd like to, I'd like to apologise in advance because my sister's watching a DVD on the computer right behind me, and um, the there's a lot of noise next door because there's cooking going on. Um, but what I'm going to give you a tour of today is the airport utility and that's the software you use to configure Apple routers in my case the time capsule but they do this with the airport extreme as well now this is unusual because with most routers you um, you configure it via a web interface now um, um, I don't mean to go through the initial set up because I can't um because I just can't but I'm gonna go through the advanced options today and by the way you can get this um through searching by spotlight on your Mac and you pull it up and if you're a Windows user it comes on the included C D. Now I should all so mention that I'm not and have no intention of using my time capsule as a backup device. It's used as a storage device for storing information that I want to store. So I'm it's as you can see down there is the one terabyte device. Um. So let's go through a little bit of the configuration. If we go over here onto the airport tab, we see um, w the first thing you'll see is a summary of everything that happened. So we've got the name of the time capsule, which we can change, information about the status flight, the firmware version, the serial number, the airport ID, what USB printers are connected, and the IP address. And like that. I haven't actually tried connecting to this via a web interface and seeing what happens, but it's not designed to do that, so um, I wouldn't recommend it. And if you go over onto the time capsule tab, here we have options to change these settings. Uh, the name of the time capsule is Venus, as you saw, because everything, everything on my network's named something to do with, with space. It's just the way I keep my network organised. And then there's my password. Um, and then I've got it set to London time. And I have advertised globally using Bonjour Unchecked. Because if you do that, it and click update, it, it comes up with a thing saying collect the problems, correct the problems, and you have to um, do some manual tweaking. Uh, so, like changing the host name so that it's a global host name so I'm gonna do what it su suggests and untick that and then I'm gonna revert that but if we go back to our um so what I originally thought Bonjour was a bridge between the Apple software and Windows but it's not because you don't need um Bonjour to connect to the time capsule contrary to some things I heard and then if we look in the options there's a couple of things I've tweaked in here um, you can even set up a place where people can contact you your location and contains the status like I've changed it to flash on activity on activity because um, 
I I I like watching it flash. Um so yeah. And I'm just going to check firmware updates recently. This is what makes this router awesome because it as it's connected to the internet and it will automatically check for updates from Apple and I I've got it set to do it weekly. So that's pretty much the airport tab. If you go on the internet tab, it just uh, gives you things that it's got from the what access point. I've just got this working with my um, working with my router. It's not replacing it. It's just working as a repeater. And as you'll see in a second, if you go into the printers tab, it just got my Canon printer connected to it. And the great thing about this is I've found that Macs have a trouble defining RPM addresses for networked printers. And um, this gets around it really well. And it automatically detected what printer I had and um I did like it was just connected by USB and the driver software worked a treat. So I was very, very pleased to hear that. Um that's about the time capsule discs. The only thing that you can um uh, edit there is the erase it or archive it. An archive that's pretty cool because you can back up all the things that were the time capsule disc and it shows you your capacity um, so as you can see I've already used quite a lot you can disconnect all the users if you're gonna move the time capsule somewhere or you're gonna unplug it on the file sharing tab I've just got it to enable file sharing and I've got it So that um, it just with the tank out your password. Now, where it's it's set is in the manual. That strictly speaking, you have to install the airport software to communicate with this, so that your Windows machines can um, communicate with it. But actually, when you connect to the network share, yeah. A shift for your username and password, and if you just put your oh, username for your Mac you. and your password for the time capsule, it'll log you in. So that's pretty nice. You can select what work group it's on, and things like that. So that's pretty nice as well. In the advanced tab. I don't really play with this much. So that was just a, a real quick overview of the airport software and I hope you've enjoyed.